The mission of the Air Force Simulation Program is to develop such compelling simulation that it is sufficient training in and of itself. We can use the training obtained in the simulation environment and apply that directly to patient care. I want to do all of my practicing in the sim lab and I want it to be second nature when it comes to me taking care of a patient in that trauma bay. I'd rather practice on a mannequin before I actually do it on a real patient just because I'd rather hone my skills, make myself feel confident that I'm, I'm able to do it. The equipment here is state of the art. We have a simulated patient that his pupils dilate. If the patient has a head injury, they'll be unequal. He has pulses. We can intubate him. We've tried to assemble a program that utilizes the highest degree of technology with the best possible curriculum and training plan and to develop a program that trains skills both for home station health care and also for their deployed responsibilities. You see an intensity where if someone were to just watch a good team in a sim lab, they would not know the difference between the fact that it was a real patient and a simulated patient. Even at our busiest U.S.-based trauma centers, there is not sufficient volume, intensity, or style of injury to completely replicate what's seen downrange. So it is necessary to supplement trauma center training with an active simulation program. At Camp Bullis, we want to prepare our medics for combat environments. In order to get that experience, you must put the student under some stress. That stress is psychological in that there are time frames and the scenarios are built to exercise those time frames. If you do it enough with a simulated patient, you're going to be able to do it in a crisis when there's a limb missing, when there's all of these distracting injuries, and there's chaos. I will be able to focus on my patient and go through the steps from memory. I feel that there is a direct correlation between good teamwork and the best patient care that you can provide. I believe if our airmen, if our soldiers, if our Marines, if our Navy, all of these service members, if they're going to go out the door and put their life on the line, they deserve to have the best medical care possible waiting for them if they get injured. We as medics should be willing to sacrifice, invest, train, and perfect our art so that we can bring to them the highest quality medical care that we can possibly provide. Simulation is but one aspect of that training, but it is a crucial aspect and we have to get that perfectly right.